everyone and welcome to Journey with the Kellers. My name is Amanda Keller and today we are back in the Keller kitchen. Um, so today we are going to be making something from the Hocus Pocus cookbook. Um, this is going to be Mrs. Dennison's Roasted Pumpkin Tacos. Now this technically isn't the next recipe in the book. After the last one that we made, um, this I kind of skipping around in this since we're getting close to Halloween. So you guys can have, you know, a couple, maybe a dessert, a couple drinks, a couple of the appetizers and a couple main dishes before Halloween gets here. So, but then after that, we'll probably go back to the regular, just kind of doing them one at a time. Okay. All right. So for this, the first thing that you're going to need is you're going to need two pounds of a winter squash. Um, it gives you suggestions as um, sugar pie, acorn, butternut, or kabacha. Yeah, kabacha. And then you're supposed to peel, seed, and then slice them into two inch slices. So the, this is an acorn squash. So I have never done this, never cut one up before. So I have no idea how hard it's going to be. I'm thinking we probably need a big knife for the first part. So I am just gonna try, oh my, to cut this thing in half, maybe. I don't cut my fingers off. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, if I can get it cut in half, then I can get the seeds out. And then I'll just have to cut it into smaller pieces to peel it. Uh oh, we're hitting the stem. Okay, let's see. Almost there. Ah, there we go. Aha! Got it. Woohoo! Okay. All right, so now we're just going to go ahead and take the seeds out of this. All right, so I got the seeds out of this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do um, to slice this up and then um, I'll get it all done and then come back. So it says to basically, um, you're gonna want, end up wanting two inch slices out of this. Um, I'm gonna say, I think I'm gonna cut it in half first. If I can do it without it rolling around too much. I think we better start in the middle again. It's very hard. Mm, that stem is super hard. And start by poking it through again. Okay. Just get it through the stick. Hmm. May not be strong enough for that. All right, let's try this side here. Okay, that side went through. There we go. Okay. Oh, look, I just took a piece. The piece just fell off of the knife. Oops, it's just a little label thing though, so that's no big deal. And let's see here. I wonder if I can just cut this stem off. There we go. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is use a smaller knife here and just kind of go up underneath the skin. The only thing is, is this is still really hard. Okay. Maybe even need smaller pieces just so the knife fits better. So, oh, that would not be good. Always remember your knife is sharp. Probably not a good idea to point it towards my stomach there. But we'll just kind of move out of the way a little bit. Okay, so once you kind of get the one side done, you can kind of move the knife kind of through it a little bit. And then just kind of cut it the rest of the way there we go okay so now let's see if it's a little bit easier to peel it a little bit but not really oh, there we go now we're getting it just kind of kind of get in between the skin and the squash There we go. Okay, almost got it. Okay. 
I just threw some squash peel on the floor. Whoops. Okay, there we go. So now it's seeded, peeled, and I'm probably gonna slice this up just a little bit thinner, but uh, so far so good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of this cut up and then I'll be back to show you what we're gonna do next. So I'll be back in just a little bit. All right, everybody. So now that we have our squash um, nice and cut up, I did cut it a little bit smaller. I did, I did the slices, I cut the slices in half just to make them a little bit smaller. Okay, so the next thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna need a large bowl. I'm not kind of doing this all over the oven just because it all goes on the stove or on the oven, in the oven. So the first thing that you're gonna do is in a large bowl, you're gonna combine one tablespoon of olive oil. And then with that, you're going to add in some adoba sauce. Now for the adoba sauce, and let me check how much that is. So you're going to need one teaspoon of it. So for the adoba sauce, um, I just got um, canned chipotle peppers in adoba sauce. Reason being because you're going to need one of the peppers in here too. Um, and so, you know, it just recommends buy a can of chipotle peppers in adoba sauce, and then you can use the pepper and the, the adoba sauce. Okay. All right, so let's get a teaspoon of that out. There we go. Then you're going to need um, some lime juice, which is supposed to be the lime, the um, juice of half a lime. Um, I'm just using my lime juice just because I don't want to keep wasting it. Okay, then you're going to put in some salt. Does it give us an actual amount or does it just say salt? It's supposed to be half a teaspoon. There we go. Okay. Then you're gonna put in some oregano. It's supposed to be Mexican oregano, um, which you need a half a teaspoon of Mexican oregano and a fourth a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. So half a teaspoon. Where did I set my oregano? Here it is. Oregano. And then a fourth of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. And you're going to put that all in there. Okay. And then you're going to whisk that together or combine it together, however you want to say it. Okay. Now, once you get it all nice and whisked together, combined together, however you want to, however you want to do it, you're, or call it, you're going to add in your squash pieces. And I'm just gonna keep tossing these as I'm adding them in, that way they kind of get. So you're just gonna toss these around in the sauce and get them all coated. you're going to have to uh, preheat your oven to 400 degrees too. Okay, so now what you're going to do is you're going to take a baking pan. I put some parchment paper down. It doesn't tell you to do that, but I always use something on the bottom of my pans. Okay, and you're going to put this in here um, and make sure it's one layer. So just kind of spread them out so they're all laying down by themselves. And our oven is almost at 400 degrees, so that works good. Okay. So you're gonna get this all done. Let me go wash my hands real quick. All right, so. Now, you're gonna pop these in the oven for it says 15 to 20 minutes or until they're tender and starting to caramelize. And look, our oven's up to 400 degrees. Why did we put that in? Good timing. All right, so timer. 
put it on for 15 minutes. There we go. Okay, so our next step is you're gonna need a big skillet. And what you're gonna do is you're going to put in um, one tablespoon of vegetable oil. So go ahead and turn this on. And you're gonna put in a tablespoon. I'm gonna need some, a clean tablespoon. There we go. So you need a tablespoon of vegetable oil, okay? All right, and then to that, do, 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 do. Um, and you're gonna add the chipotle. So I think this is the one pepper, yeah. So this is um, one chipotle pepper in adoba sauce drained and diced. So you're just gonna add your chipotle pepper. And like I said, I just pulled one out of the can made sure it was cleaned off there we go Oof, gonna have to toss this towel in the laundry when i'm done okay so you're gonna saute that for two to three minutes until it's fragrant and sticky okay. while i'm doing that i am going to go grab this over here so that i have it handy here Set that there. There we go. Okay. All right. And what are we doing after this? Okay. So the next part that you're going to need, you're going to need four cups of either fresh or frozen uh, corn kernels that have been thawed. Um, and you're going to add that into this. Give this a few more seconds here. Mm, starting to smell it, yep. Okay. And then you're also gonna need to add, with that corn, you're gonna need to add a half a teaspoon of salt. Nice and fragrant, even getting a little bit of caramelized. So we're gonna add our four cups of corn kernels, and then about a half a teaspoon of salt. Okay. And then you're just gonna stir this up to coat. Okay, so you're gonna coat it in that stuff you just put on the bottom of the pan. Okay. Okay, and you're gonna continue to saute this and stir it until the corn starts to brown up, okay? All right. And you just stir it occasionally. You don't have to stir it constantly. All right, so I'll be back in just a few minutes when this corn is all nice and browned up. So I'll be right back. Okay, so once your corn has started to brown, then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna take this out of the pan. I'm gonna shut this off here for a second. And you're going to put it into something, you know, something, a bowl, basically. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in this bowl. I just got to move some stuff out of the way. Okay. So we're going to put this in this bowl. And this is basically for a corn salad. So this is a separate dish from the pumpkin thing. It kind of makes like a whole like meal. It's not just the one recipe. It's kind of cool. Okay, so what you're gonna do now is you're gonna take half of a red uh, onion that's been chopped up and you're gonna add that into this corn. And then you're gonna use one cup of cilantro leaves. So you're gonna pick them freshly off of the stems um, one cup of them, roughly chop them up, and then you're gonna toss that in the corn as well. Okay. Then you're gonna stir it up. Okay. Mm. Looks really good. And then you're just gonna set this aside until you're ready to serve, okay? And I'm going to put a little lid over it just to kind of keep it a little bit hot. Okay, so now your next step is you're going to use the same pan that you just used to make the corn salad. Okay, 
And what you're gonna do now is you are going to add in, oh, we gotta check our pumpkins here in just a second. You're gonna add to this pan, um, you're gonna melt two tablespoons of unsalted butter, okay? that in there. Let's check on our, where is my pot holders? Oh, yeah. All right, let's check on our pumpkins and see if they're nice and soft yet. Mm, no, they definitely need another five minutes. Okay, maybe even more. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and melt this two tablespoons of butter. And you know, you don't clean the pan out or anything. You leave all the stuff in there from the corn, okay? And then you're gonna melt this until it foams, which it's starting to do right now. Then you're gonna add the beans and the reserved liquid. So you need two cans of black beans, okay? And you need to drain them, but one of the cans you need to keep the liquid that was inside it with the beans for this part, okay? So you put both cans of the beans drained in. Then you're also going to add the liquid from that can, correct? Let me make sure I'm doing that right. Yep. And then you're gonna take another can, or one of the cans, and fill it halfway with water, and you're gonna add that in as well, okay? You've added all that in now. Okay, now you're also going to add in one, I think it's just one. I have to flip back here and look here. Yep, one bay leaf. One, oops, nothing bad about bay leaves. They break up in the jar and then you don't have a bay leaf. Okay, there we go. That's about one bay leaf. And then you're also going to add in some salt, I think. Yeah, some salt, garlic powder, and coriander, ground coriander. So for salt, you need about a half a teaspoon of salt. Okay. Then for the garlic powder, you're gonna need a fourth a teaspoon of garlic powder. Too much there. And then you need a, a fourth a teaspoon of ground coriander, okay? I know I'm not measuring. Okay. So you're gonna bring this uh, to a low boil and then turn the heat down to low and simmer it for 10 to 15 minutes, okay? Oops, a couple pieces of corn in there. Oh well. All right, so let's get that boiling. Let me make sure I wasn't supposed to add anything else here. Oh, and one other thing. So to the corn, I forgot. To the corn, you're supposed to add the other another half of a lemon. You're supposed to add the juice from the half of a lemon. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that too while we're waiting for this because I forgot to do it. So stir that in there. Beautiful. Okay, perfect. All right, so that's done. All right, so now we're just gonna wait for this to come to a boil and then I'm gonna turn it down to a low and we're gonna let it simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes or until most of the liquid has been reduced, okay? And then you're just going to, um, and then I'll come back and I'll show you what we're gonna do after that. So I'll be back in a little bit. All right, you guys, so our beans are pretty much done here. So basically what you're gonna do is just smash them down with your um, fork or spoon, whatever, um, and get them, let's see, does it say like a particular, um, just says smash most of the beans and then stir to combine. So that's what we're gonna do is smash them up. And also our pumpkin is done. So I am going to pull that out of the oven here as well. So let's get those out. Mm, nice and good. And I shouldn't say pumpkin, it's actually squash. But pumpkin is a squash, I guess, so it works. Okay, so let's make sure these are nice and smashed in. They're sticking to the spoon. 
So with this, you're kind of making like a refried bean. You know, refried beans are kind of squishy. So we're trying to make a refried bean. All right, Ooh, we're getting there. It's getting pretty good here. All right, so I will continue to smash this. Once you get most of them smashed, you can go ahead and mix it up real good, you know, because refried beans are kind of a little bit saucy, a little bit mushy. All right, so I'll go ahead and get that done. And then when I come back, we'll put these together and try them and see how they taste. So I'll be back. Okay, you guys, so everything is ready to go. So basically how you do these, and you can just set this up as like a little taco bar and let people do what they want, you know, do their own, or you can do them yourself ahead of time. That's up to you. Um, also, I, you know, everything is optional as far as what you want to put on it and what you don't. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is warm up your tortillas. Now, I did the smaller tortillas. You could probably use the bigger tortillas as well if you want, um, but I'm just doing like a smaller taco one. Um, so you want to either fry them up in a pan on both sides, or you can just put them in the microwave and heat them up, um, wrap them kind of in a paper towel and heat them up a little bit the way. Or if you have a tortilla warmer, you can use a tortilla warmer as well, okay? All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna add some of your black bean sauce here. You're just gonna spread that on there. Okay, then you're gonna put some of your corn salad on, which I thought was separate, but it's not. You actually leave that on there. So put some of your corn salad on. Then you're gonna put two to three pieces, or th I'm sorry, three to four pieces of pumpkin. I think I'm just gonna put two because these are pretty small tortillas. You can put a little bit of shredded coleslaw on there. A little tajika, to C-O-T-I-G-A cheese, co -co 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 I can't say that for some reason, I'm very sorry. And then if you want a little bit of crema, you can put some crema on there, which is kind of like a sour cream. Okay, so look at that. That looks delicious, you guys, look at all that. Nice little pumpkin in there, some beans, some corn, some cheese, some cabbage mm. looks delicious okay so let's give this a try shall we mm. Mm. it's actually a really good mix them with a corn tortilla you guys i have stuff all over my face don't i mm -hmm. mm. okay that's delicious. I wasn't sure if I would like it because, you know, I don't eat squash a whole lot. But that's really good. All right, you guys. So that's our video for today. Like and subscribe if you like. Or don't if you don't. Whatever. Everybody have a good day. Enjoy your cooking. Keep your kitchen messy, which I forgot my apron. Going to have to remember to wear it. We'll see you guys later. Bye.